Hello and welcome to another A-Level Economics video with me, Mr. Goff, for MrGoff.com. This video will focus on market failure and public goods. When we talk about private and public goods, we are not talking about goods produced in the private and public sectors. Instead, we are judging goods on a number of criteria that we will look at in detail now. Most goods are private goods. A good is a private good if it is rivalrous and excludable. Rivalrous means if one person consumes the good, it is not available for another person to consume. So each punnet of strawberries here, if consumed by one person, cannot be consumed by someone else. Excludable means that once a good is provided, it is possible to restrict access to those who pay. When concerts are put on in big parks in the middle of a city, fences are erected so that they can restrict access to just those people who have tickets. Public goods have the opposite characteristics. They are non-rivalrous. Consumption of them does not reduce the amount available to other people. These goods might alternately be described as non-diminishable or non-exhaustible which both simply mean the same thing as non-rivalrous. They are also both non-excludable. Once provided, people cannot be prevented from benefiting. They also have to be non-rejectable, that is, people can't decide to opt out of receiving the good. Because of this, public goods have a marginal cost of zero. There is no additional cost to providing them to one extra person. Let's take a look at some examples of public goods. Some natural things such as fresh air can be considered public goods. When someone enjoys fresh air, they don't prevent others from doing so. You also can't stop anyone from enjoying the benefits of fresh air, even if those people happen to be people that run polluting businesses. It's non-rejectable. You can't choose not to benefit from fresh air. And there's no marginal costs. Fresh air doesn't cost any extra per person that's trying to enjoy the air. Street lighting is another example of a public good. When someone makes use of street lighting, it doesn't prevent anyone else from doing so. You also can't stop someone from enjoying the benefits of street lighting. If we were to have two people, one that had paid for street lighting and one that hadn't, walking down the same street at the same time, it couldn't be lit for one and not lit for the other. You also can't choose not to have street lighting, so it's non-rejectable. And providing street lighting to one more person adds no additional cost. Another example is the defence forces. One person benefiting from a defended nation doesn't deny it to others. It's also non-excludable, as no individual can be excluded from being defended even if they disagree with the role of the defence forces. It's non-rejectable. You can't choose not to be defended by the defence forces. And there's no marginal cost. Defending one additional citizen adds no cost to the budget of the defence forces. Many public goods would not be provided without intervention because of the free rider problem. The free rider problem is the idea that public goods are non-excludable and so people will get access to them if someone else pays for them, so they're not inclined to pay for them themselves. For instance, some people may be unwilling to pay for the armed forces because they disagree with the, their role in the world or what they do, but the services cannot be provided on an individual by individual basis. And as more individuals say, I'd rather keep my money, they will end up unfunded and we will have no defence forces. The solution to this market failure is for the government to step in and take care of defence. Quasi-public goods don't perfectly meet the requirements to be non-rivalrous and non-excludable, but they are also not perfectly rivalrous and excludable. If we look at the roads as an example, one person using the roads doesn't prevent anyone else from doing so, so on the surface it seems like a public good. But when it develops into congestion, then it is partially rivalrous 
because not everyone can use the roads at the same time. Roads can also have tolls applied. This makes them excludable to those that don't pay the charge. In areas where there's a high traffic flow and a need for a faster road, it might be possible for these to be done with private or a combined government private enterprise and people to collect tolls. But this wouldn't be applicable or suitable for smaller country roads and roads within housing estates where there wouldn't be enough people using them to make them financially viable. That brings us to the end of this video on market failure and public goods. Join me in the next video when I'll be taking a look at market failure and information gaps. Use the resources at mrgoff.com to help you revise economics. And until next time, it's bye for now.